Hi friends, today we're gonna to talk about my 10 most anticipated releases for 2023. Most of these with the exception of one are set in the first half of the year because publishing is weird and I'm, there may be more towards the end of the year that I am looking forward to as well, but I, I don't know about them yet, if that makes sense. Um, there's two that I don't have dates for, seven that are within the first half of the year, and one that is in the latter half of the year. Um, so we're just going to start with the ones that we don't know dates for and then go through the year in chronological order. One thing I do want to say is I do have a shelf on Goodreads of other anticipated releases. I just wanted to go through like the 10 that I'm most looking forward to, but if you want to know more books that I'm looking forward to in 2023, that will be linked in the description box for you down below. So the first book that we're going to talk about is The Narrow by Kate Alice Marshall. If you weren't around for 2022 and the love that Jessica has now grown for Kate Alice Marshall, uh, welcome. You are now here. Year. I read, I think, four K. Alice Marshall books this year. One the previous year, four in 2022. Absolutely in love. I have an arc for one that we'll talk about later. This one I don't have an arc for, very sadly. But maybe later. I don't know. I don't think they're out yet. Maybe they are. I don't know. Anyway, it's about a girl named Eden who goes to what I believe is a boarding school. There is like this weird river behind their school um, called the Narrow. It's described as being very narrow across, only a few feet, and very placid on the top. But once you get below the surface, it is extremely deep and extremely dangerous. Anyone who is said to have fallen in has not known to live other than one girl that Eden saw fall in six years prior named Delphine. Delphine has lived her life since that time kind of sequestered and can't have any drop of unfiltered water touch her body. Uh, we don't know why, but that's part of the book, finding it out. Something about Eden uh, needs money for tuition for the school and she gets a job taking care of Delphine. And then weird things start happening. Like she finds out that the last girl who worked for Delphine was found drowned on dry land. Um, she wakes up with like wet footprints going to her bed. She wakes up with ghosted images at the foot of her bed. Weird, creepy things like that starting to happen. And then so the book is like us figuring out what secrets Eden has and what secrets Delphine has and what happened to Delphine when she fell into the narrow. Kate Alice Marshall is known for like super spooky, creepy vibes. Even though her books are YA, they are very creepy. I felt the same way about her mid-grade. Like I felt like her first mid-grade book was too spooky for middle graders. I, I felt like the second and third book weren't quite as scary as the first book and I think that might have been because people were like girl you might want to rein that back in a little bit 12 year olds are reading this but I think it's fantastic. I had a great time so I'm very excited to see like what the spook level is on this and just ready for it. The next book I'm assuming is going to be out in 2023. I could be wrong but I don't think I am and that is The Wedding Wish by Aaron Serling. It's the third book in the X Hex trilogy, or I guess it's the X Hex series. I don't know if there's only going to be three books, but uh, I would assume so because they've typically centered around a specific pair of brothers and there's only three of them. So um, I'm very excited for the third book. Super excited. I loved the first book. I loved the second book. They are not like the best written books on the planet. They're not going to like, you know, win any literary awards, but it's a fun time for me and that's all that really matters. I really don't know what the book is about. Like there's no blurb for it or anything yet. Um, but the first book follows a witch who, when she was in college, did like a jokey kind of a hex on an ex, um, basically saying like no girl would ever love him or like his hair would never sit the right way or... I don't know, you could always put his ja jacket on inside out before he could put it on right side out. I don't know, whatever. Um, and he moved away and none of those things ever actually happened. But when he moved back to town, then those things started happening. And then they had to like fight a great evil together. Yeah. The next book is one we actually have a date for and that is January 17th and it is What Lies in the Woods also by Kate Alice Marshall. This is an adult book I do have an arc for. I haven't read it yet but I am super fucking stoked to get to it. So this book takes place uh, when our main characters are, I believe, like in their mid-30s, when they were like 11 and 12, they basically caught a killer, kind of. Uh, it's been 22 years, basically, when they were in their preteen years. They were attacked playing in the woods, and one of the girls, I think, was stabbed 17-ish times, and 
lived through her injuries and was able to identify attacker and the attacker was put away. It's been 22 years and the line that like really gets me and I'm going to read it from the computer is, the girl's testimony put away a serial killer wanted for murdering six women. They were heroes and they were liars. So essentially the girls lied about what happened and we're getting the viewpoint of them when they're in their early 30s and one of the girl wants to tell the truth about what happened and we're going to learn what the truth is. As I said, Kate Alice Marshall's books are fucking creepy and so I can't even imagine what the reveal is going to be and I'm so excited for it. The next book that is supposed to come out on January 31st is Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. The, I believe this is the final book in the Last Hours series. Um, I think it's just a trilogy. I, why am I still a Cassie Clare stan? I don't know. Um, you know, she's got her problems like we all do. I don't even know that I really remember enough of the story to really even know what's going on at this point. I I don't even care. Like every time I read one, even if I don't know like who the characters are or why they matter, I have such a fantastic time. I just, I have fun and I get excited and there's always some kind of like romance that I can 100% get behind. Um, which is James and Cordelia, obviously. There's others as well, but just it's it is the most fun. The most fun. And I love it and I can't wait. Next on February 7th we have Not Your Exes Hexes by April Asher. This is the follow-up to Not the Witch You Wed. I believe the series is called Supernatural Singles. The series follows three sisters, each of them finding love. The first book was fantastic. I imagine this next book is going to be fantastic too. We're getting the middle sister in this book and her romance following her and a demon, a half demon. He's only a half demon. I think part of what I love about this series is like the world that April has built and like the magic system and how there's so many different beings and the way everything just kind of like came together. I'm having a fantastic time reading them. Um, or I guess I should say I had a fantastic time reading the first book. There's only been one so far that I've read, so whatever. Uh, I also have an arc for this one, so hopefully I'll have read it pretty soon. But uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to that as well. Speaking of books I have arcs of, on February 29th, February 28th, we get Delicious Monsters by Lizelle Sanberry, who is a fellow author tuber. I will link in the description box down below for you if you would like to check her channel out. Uh, I do have an arc of Delicious Monsters. And so I know a few things about this story, one of which is like my favorite thing. It's multiple timeline. Um, hopefully they run in some kind of sequential order because otherwise I'll be lost, but that's outside of the point. The book follows Daisy in the past and she can see dead people and a house that she goes to and things that happen to her when she's in the house. And in present day, we have Brittany who is like trying to get out from the, under the thumb of her mother who's kind of just a terrible person. And she runs this web series, I think called Haunted or Hunted. I think it's Haunted. That would make more sense. And so she's investigating the house that Daisy was in. And then we kind of figure out both of those stories and how they overlap. I am super stoked, ready for it, here for it. Is it time yet? Next on May 2nd, we have The Sun and the Star by Rick Riordan. Do I know what this book is about? I know it's about Nico and Will. <laughs> That's literally all I know. And that was literally all I needed to know. Um, when we were reading through The Trials of Apollo, and we were getting like those snippets of Nico and Will at them at camp and just like the things they were doing. Everyone was losing their collective fucking minds over Nico and Will. And we were like, Rick, we need it. And Rick was like, I got you. And so now we have a Nico and Will story. And uh, yeah, excited, if you can't tell. I should also mention with that, that uh, Mark Ashiro, who's also an author, is listed on the book. I don't know if they, I'm assuming that means that they co-wrote it together. Uh, that's the first time I've seen that with one of Rick's books. So I don't really know like the whole full thing. Like, is it going to be one of those things with like some other famous authors who write way too many books every year? And like, they've got their name giant on a book. And then there's someone else's name teeny tiny. And that teeny tiny name, name is actually the person who wrote the book. They were just given the ideas and told what to do by the person with their name this big on the book. I don't really know. But since Mark's name's on the book, we should give him props. Absolutely. 
And on May 2nd, we get a book that I have been dreaming about since I finished the first book. The Golden Frog Game is by Clarabel A. Ortega. It is the second book in the Witchling series. If you don't know, The Witchlings is a book that I read in 2022. It is my favorite mid-grade of all time. I absolutely loved it. Um, I don't actually think I rated it a perfect rating. It was like a 4.75, but I don't care. It's still my favorite mid-grade I've ever read. Still my favorite mid-grade that I've ever read. It was fan fucking tastic. It was a great time. It follows a young witch who lives in the society where on I believe like their 12th or 13th birthday they get separated into different covens. Everybody in that town gets separated into covens within that town. And basically they wear these little jewels on their necklaces and they go to the ceremony and then the jewel lights up with whatever color of the cup and that you're in. I am Moth House, in case you didn't know. Uh, moth house represent so basically our main character kind of gets put into this coven of spares which is basically anybody who's left over that didn't fit in with another coven they get thrown in the spare coven and the spares are treated very poorly and are not really looked upon very well within the society throughout the first book the girls are able to defeat a big bat and kind of give spares um, a better track record than what they've had in the past and people kind of start to see that maybe the spares aren't that bad after all um, you know like duh and so I don't really know what the second book is going to follow and I can't tell you anyway because maybe you haven't read the first book which if you haven't you should because it's fantastic and uh, yeah looking forward to that May 2nd Next, on June 27th, we have a new book by Crystal Sutherland, who wrote my favorite book of all time, A Semi-Definitive List of Worst Nightmares. Um, I am stoked, clearly. Uh, this one's called The Invocations. It is about three girls. One is a witch. One is someone who, I believe, sold part of her soul to a devil. She tried to make a deal with a demon and then became cursed. Yeah. And then the other girl, um, her sister died and she is hoping that it was supernatural so that there's a way for her to bring her sister back to life. Whereas if it was not supernatural, she would not be able to do that. So the my sister died girl and the I've been cursed by a demon girl sell parts of their soul to the witch to try to get their things so they can have the magic to do the things that they wanted to do. But then the witch has somebody who's following her around and killing off all the people she's making deals with. And so then the three of them have to team up to defeat that big bad and then do some things. I don't know, okay? I'm just fucking stoked. And the last book we're going to talk about today comes out on September 26th. It is another Rick Riordan. It is Percy Jackson and the Chalice of the Gods. That's right, a sixth Percy Jackson book. I don't know what Rick was doing when he was just like sitting around one day and he was like, you know what I should do? I should start writing Percy Jackson books again. Maybe because of the TV series, I don't know. However, I'm super stoked. It takes place during Percy's senior year of high school. It's got him and Annabeth and Grover again, and they are going to have to go on these quests in order to get the recommendation letters that Percy needs to go to college. I'm so excited about that. It is hilarious to me, um, but I'm very excited. I have loved every one of Rick's books. I've read everything in the mid-grade, the Percy Jackson world, if you will. I've had a fantastic time reading through all of them. They're always funny. They always make me laugh out loud. I always have a great time. So I'm very excited to return back to the world of Percy Jackson. Uh, very weird to get like a book six after there being like another series of five that Percy was in after the first five. I don't... I'm excited and I don't care. <laughs> so those were the 10 books that I'm most looking forward to in 2023. Again, there's going to be a full list in the description box down below for my Goodreads shelf um, that you can check out other books that I'm excited for if you want to know what I'm looking into. Maybe there's something there for you as well. If you are excited for any of these or if there's a specific book that you're very excited for that you think I might like, let me know in the description box down below. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!